The next step, now that you have two amino acid tRNAs, one in the P site, one in the A site, is peptide bond formation. And that is the result of the action of peptidyl transferase. And as you can see, there is a peptide bond that is formed between amino acid 2 and formal methionine. And the amino acid 2 is at this point still attached to its tRNA. So what has happened is the FMET has been transferred from its tRNA to the second amino acid to produce what we see here. Peptidyl transferase is the ribozyme, an RNA enzyme. Recall that there is a ribozyme activity that can self-splice introns in organelles. Well, this is a ribozyme activity that is present in E. coli ribosomes. So it's a natural part of whole cells, not just organelles. This is a component of ribosomal RNA that would be present in the large subunit. And apparently, none of the proteins in this large ribosome complex seems to have much to do with the creation of that peptide bond. The rRNA that does this spans the P and the A site, so it's not tied to one site only. That's not the end of elongation. Now that we have a dipeptide formed, at least at the beginning, we need to free up the A site, put the next codon into the A site so the third amino acid can get in.